Welcome to Food You. We're your host. I'm Christina. And I'm Gabe. It's been a while, but we're back. <laughs> Today we've got fresh vegetables, fruits, because we've been to the farmer's market. We have. These are fresh peaches. And we've been to your grandma's house for these tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. And we're going to cook up some dishes using this fresh produce, and we've got some fish in the refrigerator too. Yes, coming up today we're doing roasted peaches with frozen yogurt for a little healthy twist instead of ice cream. And a tomato, cucumber, Asian inspired salad. And then you're making a salmon? Yes, we're also making a curry ginger salmon. Salmon? I say salmon uh, because that's how I grew up saying it. Um, so depending on who I'm around, I say salmon or salmon. Okay, well you have some salmon, I'll have some salmon. And then last on our menu are okra fries. Um, many of you have tried fried okra growing up in the South, but we're going to show you and teach you a new twist on fried okra. So let's get started with the roasted peach dish. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. And also remember, you can find us on YouTube and on Facebook at Food U and Wingate Univers on the Wingate University channel. All right, so what I have here are four fresh peaches straight from the farmer's market. And I'm going to cut them in half. And I have our oven preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see. And when you cut a peach, just cut it all the way around, give it a twist. And then when you go in towards the top here, you can pop that little pit right out. Super easy. Let's see. Will you grab a baking dish for me over there, please? The cookie sheet? Yes. Perfect. All right. So one more peach. Let's see. I want to start these first so that while we're making the rest of our meal, dessert can be baking. It takes about 30 minutes in the oven. And if you pop these in right when you sit down to eat, they should be warm and ready to eat right when dinner's over. So we're going to set these on our baking dish. And we're going to put a little pat of butter on each one in the middle. Just a little bit, like a half teaspoon maybe. I'm gonna start cutting up some tomatoes for my tomato salad. Oh, that sounds good. And cucumber. So cucumber, no skin. I'm gonna get a few tomatoes of different colors. That's a tomato, probably some version of an heirloom tomato. And I'm just gonna mix it up and keep it fresh here. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. And now that I've got the butter on each of the peaches, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of brown sugar on each one. If you've ever had peach cobbler, this kind of reminds me of that. When it goes in the oven, the brown sugar and butter caramelize, and it gives you a nice sweet brown topping. Sweet brown. Sweet brown. Sweet brown. Is that the person in the TV thing that said, ain't nobody got time for that? I don't know. <laughs> There we go. Hands a little brush. And then our last step is to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top. So just a little dash on top of each one. These will be so good with our vanilla frozen yogurt. And that's it. And we're going to pop these into the oven on 375 for 25 to 30 minutes, and they'll be ready. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Welcome back. I'm over here chopping up vegetables. I got the cucumber in here and I'm going to do a few tomatoes. These are little yellow tomatoes. You can probably find some like these at a farmer's market nearby, maybe in downtown Monroe. And then we got these uh, Roma tomatoes and then we got these heirlooms and then we have this orange one. I'm not sure what variety it is, but we got this at Christina's grandma's house in Mountain Home, North Carolina near Hendersonville where Wingate has a campus. 
Hey. Those look really good. Thank you. You are what's, welcome. What's your favorite fruit, Christina? Um, I think strawberry. Huh. Guess what mine is? What? Tomatoes. Tomatoes are fruit. Are fruit. <laughs> yes. All right. This one here is a little bit mushy, but. That's okay. It may not be the prettiest, but it's still good. Mm hmm That's what people say about me. <laughs> um, I smell basil. Yes. I'm going to put the basil in here in just a minute. And I'm also going to put some <laughs> rice vinegar and some sesame oil. Yeah, this one's real mushy or my knife's not sharp one. So I'm going to ask Christina to finish chopping these tomatoes while I make the sauce that goes on the salad. Sounds good. Okay. All right. There's the ball. Thank okay. you. Yeah. And here's the humidor. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Okay. So, for the salad, we're going to go with a tablespoon of rice vinegar. You know what I like to do? I like to eyeball it. Me so, too. Okay. So, I'm going to eyeball that. A tablespoon is kind of like a good party splash. That's the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a tablespoon, a tablespoon of sesame oil. Mm. I love sesame oil. It's really... I don't know, it's that earthy flavor that I get in Asian dishes when you can't quite put your finger on what it is. Mm -hmm. It's good. I'm going to do a tablespoon of maple syrup. And I'm going to do a little lime juice. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll take both halves. I'm going to do All the right. juice of a whole lime. So I'm finishing up these tomatoes, and Gabe mentioned some basil is going to go into this dressing for the salad, and we're going to teach you how to make a chiffonade. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. So chiffonade is a technique to cut any flat-leafed green vegetable or thing that you would eat, and it cuts it into a thin ribbon that's kind of elegant and pretty, and it looks very nice on a salad, and especially with basil. So what you want to do is pull all your leaves off and then stack them on top of one another like this. Pretty easy. Can I, can I suggest something? Sure. Just cutting the stems off? Mm-hmm. There we go. That's just my preference. All right. Sounds good. So now that we've got the stems cut off and the leaves stacked up, we're going to roll it together very tightly. And you can roll either way. I'm just doing long ways. And then you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut very thin strips. And when it comes off, you get these little ribbons. Doesn't that look cool? Mm -hmm. Makes pretty garnish. It looks good on tomato salads or on bruschetta or anything you might be making. Mm. Smells good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Basil is such a summer herb, and it smells so fresh in the summertime. I had a little pot of basil on my patio, and it died last year. But then, lo and behold, this summer it started popping back out. But not the plant that was there, little, I guess, seeds that fell around or something. They were new plants that came up. So I have basil again. Very nice. All right, I'm going to finish chopping this up, and you have the dressing ready? Mm-hmm. All right. And there That's you go. That's a lot of basil. We don't have to use all of it. I'd say four tablespoons for this recipe, but if you're not real big into basil, you could definitely modify it to your taste. I'm just stirring the tomatoes and the cucumbers up first before I put the thing, put the dressing on. Now, I'm, now what I'm going to do is put the dressing on. And I'm just going to kind of... <laughs> it smells good. I can smell the sesame oil from here. Yeah, that sesame oil... You might want to try that one out first before you actually use it, because it's okay, but a little bit goes a long way for me. Okay. 
you can modify it to your taste. Now, I'm going to take a little, I'm not going to use all this. Okay. Because it's strong too, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of, like this. It almost smells kind of like licorice. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> <laughs> now, would you mix that up, or would you just let it be on top like that? I would mix it up. I would probably put this much more Kay. and mix it up, Go and then it. put a little bit on the top as well Dang. after it's blended. Okay. I'm going to stir that thing back up. Just to give even bites when you're actually eating it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy tasting the basil in dishes. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. Do you like going to the farmer's market? I do. I like going early in the morning before everybody gets there, like right when they first open. Mm -hmm. They have the best selection. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Fresh baked bread, stuff like that. Stuff isn't sold out yet. Mm -hmm. Do you like going? Yeah. It's, uh, you have to get up early, but yep. I like it when I get there. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. Our tomato salad is finished, and when we come back, we'll teach you how to make okra fries. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Welcome back. We're here getting our okra ready to make okra fries. Our peaches are still baking and they're smelling so good. Mm -hmm. So once again, if you want to watch this episode over and over and <laughs> over again, go to find us on YouTube at the Wingate University channel under Food You. We're also on Facebook. What were you saying? Yes. And we're also on Union County Cable channel 22 or 97.3. That's all right. Um, let's see, I'm cutting this okra super thin and I'll talk about that in a second. But while I'm doing this, would you mind filling that pan with maybe a half inch of oil? Okay. Cool. And I chose to use olive oil today, but when we were getting ready for today's show, you were talking a little bit about canola oil. Yeah, I was saying I might fry this okra in canola oil because it has a higher smoking temperature and it's just easier to deal with when you're frying something like this, I think, for me. But this will work and this, it'll be good. And I chose that because I like the flavor that olive oil gives the vegetable. Mm -hmm. So, okra fries. A lot of us, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> a lot of us who grew up in the South here have had fried okra. We had it in school lunches or we've had stewed okra in soups or vegetable gumbos. But today we're gonna have okra fries instead of fried okra, if that makes sense. So we're not gonna bread it. What we're doing is taking a pot of fresh okra, cutting it in half. And then I like to put those halves flat down and then we're going to take our knife and cut it very thinly. And it's almost like little thin matchsticks. And it's okay that some are going to be longer than others. Um, when you eat french fries, they're not all the same length either. It's true. And we're heating our oil over medium-high heat until it's 350 degrees. And sometimes I eyeball it, I just drop a piece of okra in and when it starts bubbling, then I know it's ready. But if you want, you can also use a thermometer to check it. You just wanna be sure not to put the end of the thermometer on the bottom of the pan because it'll read the bottom of the pan instead of the temperature of the oil. I don't know if I could fit this under my tongue, but I, I could fit it in my armpit <laughs> to take my temperature. All right, for this particular recipe, I like to use one pound of okra, um, which is, I have about a pound and a half here, so I'm not going to cut it all. But one pound of okra will feed four people. Which people? <laughs> It'll feed two people, or four people who aren't in love with okra fries. How about that? Mm -hmm. 
we first met these okra fries at a, an Indian restaurant in Asheville. Yes. Outside of Hendersonville, where Wingate has a campus. <laughs> and we asked them how to make them. Well, I think we tried first to make them, and then we asked them how they made them. And so that's where we got the idea from. Yes. They're so good. And they told us, just cut the okra, drop it in the oil for a couple minutes, and then the secret is salt and lime juice. Okay. All right. Okay. This is all nice and chopped up. We've got tons of okra ready. Okra. 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 And I'm going to see where we are with the oil. Takes a second for the thermometer to read. All right. I'm going to do one more test one. Let's see. See where we are? Yep. You hear that sizzle? Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So let's drop a little bit of okra in the pan. You don't want to overcrowd your pan, so I like to do about a cup at a time. And our oil is hot, but it's not so hot that it's going to spit up while you put it in. <laughs> it's not. So I've got some, about a cup of it in there right now, Just giving it a little gentle stir. And we're going to let this fry for two to three minutes or until it's golden brown. You can already see the pods getting brown. Let's see. And over here, I have a I plate with paper towels on it, ready to drain the okra. Let's see. It smells so good. Crisping up the little seeds inside the okra pods are turning brown. Now that I know our oil is the right temperature, I'm just going to pop this off so I don't have to worry about it falling in the pan. And again, this is one pound of okra and we're frying it in olive oil over medium high heat and it takes about two to three minutes. Now, sometimes I stir it around, but I try not to be too impatient and just let it do its thing. Mm, mm. I know. It's tempting to want to like stir it around and mess with it. Yeah. But try to just let it be. Because you can see even the pods on the top are starting to turn brown and little mm. things. I'm messing with it. Sorry. Yeah. Same color on the bottom as it is on the top. Almost ready. When we were at your grandma's house, we all, uh, in addition to the tomatoes, we also picked some blueberries. We did. And I picked, we picked about the same amount. Eh, yeah, I think we picked about the same amount of blueberries. About a half gallon each. But mine looked like they were store-bought and clean and big and plump. And yours looked like they had been picked by <laughs> uh, like a combine like a <laughs> farm machine and you said you were going I'm come. all about efficiency I just grab my hand and pull the ripe ones off and put them in the bucket mm -hmm. Gabe's out there like one for my bucket <laughs> Two. Mm -hmm. that was fun it was and they tasted amazing mm -hmm. all right these are turning nice and brown so I'm gonna pull them out with my tongs onto my paper plate or excuse me, my paper towel covered plate to drain. Here we go. And you can see it really shrinks down compared to the cup of okra, raw okra that we put into the oil. So here we go. And I'm going to set these to the side and I'm going to keep frying this okra in batches. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Gabe's going to teach us how to make salmon. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life.
Welcome back. I'm still frying up okra. And I see this okra and this oil, and I think, oh my, what if we had a fire on our hands? We won't. Yeah, I know we won't, because you're <laughs> good at this. But if we did, the first thing you should do is turn this burner off. Okay. Turn the heat off. All right. The second thing would be to throw baking soda on it. An oil fire is di or grease fire is different than a regular fire, so you want to turn the heat off, put baking soda on it if that doesn't work, to smother it, and then or and or put the lid on. Okay. To smother it. I think but, that's probably what I would do instinctively: put the lid on and mm -hmm. turn the burner off and run. But preferably <laughs> not the ga uh, glass lid. Oh. Because the heat might break it. That's all I have. And well, then that's what you would use, but. The last thing would be the fire extinguisher. Good idea. So. Good idea to have one of those in the kitchen. Okay, well, while that's continuing to fry, I'm going to start on the salmon. Sounds good. I'll okay. be over here frying okra. So here we have two pieces of salmon, and at the grocery store we asked, we got them, we got the fillets without the skin just kind of makes it easier to work with. You don't have to worry about taking the skin off uh, before or after. But what I'm going to do is make a uh, seasoning rub to put on the salmon. So I'm going to start by cutting up this ginger, piece of fresh ginger. And I'm just going to, I'm going to cut off a little bit of it and just use a piece of it. And I'm going to skin it as best I can without cutting myself. And this is curry ginger salmon? This is curry ginger salmon. What? Smell that. It's Smell really, that. <laughs> it's really good. Mm. It smells really light and refreshing. Mm -hmm. Let's see, how much ginger are you going to put in the rub? Uh, I'm going to put all this, I'm going to chop all this up, so it'll probably be around a tablespoon or so. Or okay. maybe a tablespoon and a half. We're big on eyeballing things and recipes and making things to suit your taste. But if you are the type of cook who needs a hard, fast recipe to follow, you can always check out our Facebook page to find printouts of our recipes. And as far as the salmon goes, um, we bought this fresh at the grocery store. But if your grocery store doesn't have the fresh fish or the fresh fish that you're not all that, uh, not all that crazy about or that doesn't look all that fresh, you could also use frozen fillets. Those are easy to find nowadays, too, in the freezer section. As always, we'd like to thank the Union County Agricultural Center. We're here in the demonstration kitchen, uh, thanks to the North Carolina Cooperative Extension. Thank you, as always. All right, I got my ginger minced. Put that in there, there. I'm gonna go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, and I've got my last batch of okra going. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of curry powder, and this is just a generic curry powder. You can find all kinds, all flavors. I like the regular generic, and I also like the Madras curry. Mm. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I like the flavor in it. Yeah. A little bit of black pepper. A bit of salt. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in my pan. Alrighty. Just a little bit. It's not going to need any much to keep from sticking. I'm going to turn the thing on. 
What? What? I'm going to turn on medium low. If you're cooking fish, you want to shoot for a minimum inside temperature of 145, uh, just to be safe. But you can always take the risk and cook to your preference, but as a standard minimum temperature of 145. You actually prefer fish a little bit on the rare side, don't you? Yeah, if it's a good quality fish, then I think it's better undercooked. The olive oil, um, some oils aren't like this, but olive oil is a little bit thick, and so when it starts to heat up, you'll see it run around a little bit more smoothly. That's how you can tell it's getting hot. It becomes less viscous. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to mix up my spices here. I've washed my hands, don't worry. And I'm just going to kind of pat it and rub it into my fish here. Right? Yep. That's good. The ginger probably could have been cut a little bit smaller, but I did the best I could. And it'll, it'll get soft and mellow when it's cooking. And do you do both sides or just one? I'm going to do both. I thought about just doing one, but I think I'm going to do both. You all right? Yep. It got a little bit hot for me. There we go. All right. And while you're finishing rubbing that down, I'm going to pull the last of our okra out of the pan. Turn my heat off. go. Fish the last of these little guys out of the pan. We have a lot of the pods left in the oil, or the seeds that are inside the pods, but that's, that's normal and that's okay. And there we go. And while this is nice and hot, will you pass me the salt, please? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're going to give it a little salt, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take half a lime, squeeze it over it. There we go. I love that limes don't have seeds like lemons. You can just squeeze it right out of the, right out of the flesh. And these are all ready. And I'm going to set those to the side while we wait on the salmon. Okay. What's going on right now? What about those peaches? Are they about ready? They are. I'm going to check on them and then we'll pull them out and plate them up when the salmon's ready. Okay. <laughs> They're looking good. So the salmon's sizzling and I'm going to cover it up so it can steam. Sounds good. Right. And you want to do that for about five minutes, right? Mm-hmm. So five minutes on this side, and then we'll flip it over, let it cut, cook, not cut, let it cook two more minutes, and that'll be ready. And I'm going to pull the peaches out of the oven, and we'll take a break and meet you right back here with our final meal. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. The peaches are out of the oven and smelling delicious. Mm. You can see the butter has melted and the brown sugar has caramelized. And I'm going to put one, actually, yeah, we'll do one on each plate. You could do two, two halves on a plate if you wanted to. And then I've got some vanilla frozen yogurt here and I'm just going to make one big scoop to put on the top. There we go. 
See if we can get it out. There it goes. Yum. And it starts to melt when it hits it. So good. It tastes like <laughs> peach cobbler and ice cream. And you could do ice cream, but we're just trying to be a little bit healthier with the frozen yogurt. So, we've got our dessert all ready, and Gabe's got the salmon ready. I'm gonna pop this back in the freezer. There's one fish. That looks awesome. And you can see the fish is cooked all the way through, and it has a nice yellow, orangish tinge to the top from the herb rub that Gabe prepared on it. And we're gonna serve it up with some of our okra fries. And we remember, after we fried the okra, we put some salt on it and then squeezed some lime. And that's all ready. And we'll serve up some of our tomato salad with it. And just a reminder that you can find all of these recipes on our Facebook page under Wingate University and Food U. And on YouTube on the Wingate University channel, Food U. This looks like a pretty good dinner. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Any meal. I'd eat this for breakfast. <laughs> so, nice summer meal. We've got our salmon curry, or excuse me, our ginger curry salmon, our okra fries, our Asian-inspired tomato salad, and our roasted peaches with frozen yogurt. And this has been another episode of Food You. We hope you'll join us next time. See you soon. <laughs>